Well, hello, everybody. Um, I want to start by saying that I've never been one to uh, go out of my way looking for parades. Parades, going to a parade has not been really on my radar screen or one of my favorite things, except one time I do remember that I made uh, an effort to get to a parade and I absolutely uh, loved it. It was way back in 1986. You can do the math. I was a young man back then. Uh, but uh, it was the Thanksgiving Macy's Day Parade in New York, and I absolutely loved it. I was together with good friends. We were blessed with good weather that day, and uh, uh, there was a lot of excitement in the air. Uh, there were beautiful floats and balloons. It just was a wonderful parade, and I love that day and remember it fondly. But welcome to you as we are into now week number 30 of our year-long walk through the New Testament. And today we find Jesus on a parade of sorts. We're going to be taking a look at Matthew starting in chapter uh, 21, heading into uh, chapter 25 in just a minute. That's our reading for this week. But Jesus we find in Matthew 21 on this parade, in other words, his entry into Jerusalem for what turns out to be the last time. He's riding on a humble donkey. I'm sure that maybe you've heard that story, that account of what we call Palm Sunday. Um, I want to just read for you a few verses from Matthew 21 as Jesus enters into the city to a lot of fanfare. It's like a big Macy's Day parade, if you will. Let me uh, read for you 21, uh, chapter 21, verses 8 through 11. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of Jesus and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Maybe, as you know, palms were used back in that day to celebrate a coronation of a new king. They saw Jesus as a new king, hoping for this new king of Israel. And you know, in a lot of ways, they were right. Uh, certainly, Jesus turns out to be a king. But Jesus is a king of a much different sort, different than what they might have expected. You heard them shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. They were calling Jesus the son of David. And David, remember King David of Israel's kingdom fame, um, among many things, David was the great king of Israel. He was a conqueror. He was a warrior. He was a military leader. He was giving power to Israel. They were kind of on the top of the, top of the hill, if you will. Uh, he had a lot of political strength. He was expanding the borders of Israel, and he was defeating their enemies. And that's maybe what the crowds were hoping for in Jesus. And so they're surprised later in Holy Week, during the events particularly of Good Friday, when Jesus does not fit that mold. Jesus is not in for a military fight. He is about expanding borders, but not the borders of the nation of Israel. Jesus is about expanding the borders of the very kingdom of God. And Jesus is about defeating enemies, not political enemies, but rather much larger enemies for all of humanity. And namely, he defeats the enemies of sin and death. You know, Jesus welcomes everybody into this kingdom of God. That's how he's expanding the borders. He welcomes even the blind and the lame. As you continue reading in chapter 21 in that great episode where Jesus cleanses the temple, in the midst of that, it says in verse 14, the blind and the lame came to Jesus in the temple and he cured them. That's different than King David. David, in fact, had established a law that prohibited the blind and the lame from even entering into the temple, entering into God's presence. They were seen as not worthy or not clean enough to do that. Jesus is one who welcomes all people. 
He's different than David. Jesus welcomes you and me. Despite our ailments, despite our brokenness, despite our sinfulness, he says, welcome to the kingdom of God by virtue of my cross, which I'm going to, my vir by virtue of my death on the cross and my resurrection. You have entrance into God's kingdom. You belong to God. And so Jesus, as he begins Holy Week with this great parade, does it in order not to make Israel more powerful, but to expand the very kingdom of God, including you and me. There's a lot in these chapters, 21 through 25. I can't get to all of them. I encourage you to read them. I do want to touch on one other chapter, though, and that's chapter 25. I think chapter 25 in Matthew's Gospel is really one of the greatest chapters in Scripture. And in it, uh, Jesus does a lot of teaching. In fact, he tells three major parables. The Gospel of Matthew, Jesus does a lot of teaching, and he continues that here while he's in Jerusalem on the way to the cross. So in Matthew chapter 25, quickly, he first tells the parable of the ten bridesmaids. And as you read it, you'll see that Jesus' lesson is, don't get caught without oil in your lamp. Don't get caught being asleep because you might miss the bridegroom. You don't know when the bridegroom is going to show up. It's like hide and seek. Jesus is saying, pay attention because I'm looking for you. I'm coming into your midst. I'm breaking into your world to do a new thing, to give you forgiveness, to give you life. Be ready, prepare, don't miss it. He says, put your faith in me. So Jesus teaches us in that parable of the ten bridesmaids to live expectantly, living expecting God to break into our midst. The second parable is a parable that's very familiar to you, maybe. It's a parable of the talents. Remember the master gives his servants different numbers of talents. One gets five talents, one gets two, one gets one, and the master leaves for a while. And when he comes back, they do their, their reckoning with the master. And one of them, uh, the one that had five, made five more. And the one that had two made, invested wisely and made two more. And Jesus tells them, um, as you do that, and he says to them, you can enter into the joy of my kingdom. I want you to know that Jesus gives you talents. He gives you gifts. He's given you a lot of resources. He's given you uh, all that you are, your personality. And he's really telling us in this parable as we read through it to use our lives to give glory to God. The name of our congregation is Glory a Day, Glory of God. We are called to give glory to God by all that we are and who we are because he's given us so many talents. So use your talents wisely, responsibly. Be good stewards. Jesus teaches us in this parable number two to live responsibly, wisely, as good stewards of all that God has given us. And finally, parable number three is that parable of the sheep and the goats, this scene at the end of time when Jesus separates the sheep uh, and puts them on, the, on his right and the goats on his left and the sheep show who they are and who they belong to by how they live. They're feeding those who are hungry. They're giving drink to those who are thirsty. They're clothing those who are cold and naked, and they're visiting those who are in prison. And Jesus says to them, when you've done it to all of these, well done to you, he says, because when you do it to the least of these, my sisters and brothers, you have done that to me. And I want you to know as you read through that, sometimes we worry, am I a sheep or am I a goat? I want you to know that by virtue of what Jesus has done for you during Holy Week on the cross and then in his resurrection, he has made you a part of his kingdom. In other words, you are a sheep. And the more and more we follow Jesus, the more naturally we become those who feed those who are hungry give water to those who are thirsty, and to clothe those who are cold, and to visit those who are in prison. It becomes more and more natural to us as we become people of God, and that's who you are. In other words, in this parable number three, Jesus teaches us and empowers us to live compassionately, compassionately. So we live expectantly, Jesus breaking into our midst. We live wisely, uh, according to God's calling as good stewards. And we live also very compassionately, doing unto those who are uh, in need 
And as we do that, we do it to Jesus himself. So I encourage you to, to dig in, to read, to ponder, to pray over these chapters, Matthew 21 through 25. And as we move toward Holy Week and next week into the celebration of Easter, know that God is with you, God is blessing you, and God is the one who gives you life. God is good all the time.